So we are headed to Ikea. We are going to be doing some Ikea Christmas gift hacks today. I always love the Christmas gift episodes. But first I wanna thank Ritual Vitamins for sponsoring this episode. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about them in just a second, but first let's get headed to Ikea. So we have arrived. It looks super busy. So let's get in there and see if there's anything left. <laughs> All right, so we just arrived and I ran into Jeanette. She's a little camera shy, but I just wanted to give her a shout out and say thanks for saying hi. So now we're gonna go shopping and I have a feeling we are gonna be focusing heavily on kind of kitchen items just because I just think that they make good gifts. All right, so I'm in the cutting board section and I ran into another DIY niner. Say hello, hello. this is Sherelle and I am so glad she came and said hi. <laughs> so I'm shooting a Christmas hack video and so that's what okay. we're doing. That was so much fun. So I did find a cutting board. I don't have a plan for it yet, but it's in my cart and we're gonna come up with something fun. I love to meet all of you. So if you ever spot me out, don't be afraid to say hi. I was just noticing these dish towels and they are only 79 cents each. I think we could do something really fun with these for Christmas. I'm gonna grab several of these. These bottles are only $2.99. We'll grab a couple of these. Look at this lazy Susan here. I think this would make an incredible gift. We'll come up with something fun. Okay, so somebody, maybe me, I don't know. <laughs> Somebody should put together 101 ways you can use a sword sew rug. Today, I've got a really fun idea. I cannot wait to share it with you, but for now, it's going in the cart. So call me crazy, but I have been mulling around in this plant section considering these as a gift idea. I think I would cry if somebody gave me a plant only because I am a serial plant killer. A plant would be a gift idea for the right person. Just me. <laughs> All right, I feel really good about my purchases, so let's get back and start DIYing them. We are back from our shopping trip, and I am so excited about some of the things we got. But before we get into that, I wanted to tell you a little bit about today's sponsor. So for me, supplementation is part of my daily routine. It is so important. Now, I need to make better food choices in general, but even if I were to go on something very strict, it's just almost impossible to get all of the nutrients that I need by just food alone. And part of that is taking a daily vitamin and I am taking Ritual. It's been my favorite vitamin I have ever taken for many reasons. The first one is it has omega-3s. Before Ritual, I have never been able to take an omega-3 because they always upset my stomach. But for some reason, it doesn't with this. And I think it is because it has some essential oils in it, mint flavored. And I think that that is soothing my belly. And so it has been so good that I can finally take omega three because those are so important, but they have just never meshed well with me. They are honestly the best tasting multivitamin that I've ever had. And I have like kind of a minty aftertaste in my mouth. They're kind of pretty, to be honest with you. This is like the bottle I've been taking them. They list where they are obtaining all of their ingredients. I love that the packaging is all recycled material. These vitamins were made by women with women in mind, and I love that. Ritual has given me a coupon code right there. Go ahead and use that to get 10% off your first three months. I'm out and I'm building things and we're working really hard. I've really tried to figure out what my body needs. With all of the choices that I'm making, I'm able to create and do and be active. So if you're interested in learning more about them, check them out in the description box below. So without further ado, we are going to go into our first IKEA hack which is we are gonna be taking this sort so rug and making it into a purse. And now if you don't have an Ikea near you, there is a really adorable herringbone black and white rug at Dollar Tree that I think would work so cute. So this is pretty easy to put together. It does require a little sewing. I mean, I guess you can make it without sewing, but the real proper way to do it is with a sewing machine. And this is a perfect, perfect beginner project. It is just straight stitching at its finest. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take our rug 
remove the big ginormous tag off of it and then we're going to kind of fold it into thirds um, so that you, it's kind of going to be like a messenger flap now we're going to do this kind of inside out so like the the tag side out then flip it and then the tag side will be in so right sides together so then we're going to take some clips and clip the bottom portion that's going to be the purse section and we are going to sew down the sides you could stop right here and put on the strap and be done with it but i wanted ours to have a little bit more structure so we're going to kind of do like a box I think is what it's called. I'm drawing a blank here, but you get the idea. So what we're gonna do to do that is we're gonna make a triangle on the corners as you see me doing here. Even though I use the kind of fun clips on the, uh, the side seams, this really does work better with a straight pin just because it kind of shows you where you need to, to sew. And then we're gonna go from that point up two inches and we're going to put in a pin and that's where our stitch is going to be and then we're going to put a couple more pins on either side so we can kind of have a line to follow and then we're going to just st stitch that across on the angle like so and we're going to do it on either side now this will kind of give us like a bottom and give us a little structure to this purse which is awesome <laughs> and so and then i don't cut off the excess i'm gonna leave it just because i think it adds a little bit of stability it's fine i don't actually cut off anything i actually even left the fringe at the top of the inside of the purse just because i didn't think it hurt anything to have it there so i did this a little out of order but i actually think it will still work just fine but i decided to go ahead and put in some little loops on either side to attach our strap to that we're going to be making here in just a second and I stitched that on after the fact using a zigzag stitch I think this worked out fine but honestly you could probably take some loops and sew them into the seam so they're kind of more on the outside I hope that makes sense but this worked out fine by just stitching it on that inseam area and and having two little loops like stood it up and it felt like the top section was hanging out a little bit too much now that we had did our little box pleat on the bottom so I decided to just at the top stitch in like fold it over and stitch it in like an inch on either side and that just kind of narrowed the 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 top flap just a touch all of these extra steps are totally optional it's all just what you want to do and how you want to kind of personalize it now it's time to add a strap and i thought it would look really cool and kind of have like a boho flare that we're kind of already having here um, if we did one that was made out of beads so i just took some kind of thicker jute twine it's not quite a rope but it's also a little bit thicker than a twine i think i picked this one up from walmart and i threaded these wooden beads that i get in bulk off of amazon they're such a good price when you can buy them in bulk i'll link them below and i just strung them and i made my strap about 36 inches long but you could kind of just take a measuring tape and measure it to see how long you think you need it um it kind of depends on like the size of the purse you know and and how high up you want it or how low i kind of made mine as like a cross bag you'll see here in just a second and just thread those in we are going to loop that through and kind of tie it onto those loops that we sewed onto place and I did like a triple knot I'm not an expert knot tier but I I tied it on the best I could and then I did the same to the other side and then just for added assurance I just took some super glue and kind of like soaked those knots so that they weren't going anywhere after the fact and they aren't i promise you i've touched them they are as hard as rock <laughs> but you don't have to do that if you don't want to but i just wanted to make sure that once it had some weight on it that the beads wouldn't go flying everywhere so i i assure you this strap is solid Another idea that I had is maybe that you could put some hooks on them and so you could have make it removable so you can toss this into the washing machine if you wanted to. I didn't do that. Um, it would be an extra step and a little bit extra cost. That's up to you. So my last step in this process is to just kind of 
finish it off, I tied on a faux button. Honestly, the top flap is long enough and kind of heavy enough that I didn't really feel like it needed to be kind of buttoned down. Like it was, it's not going anywhere. So this is more decorative. I picked up this button at Michael's and I tied it on with some jute twine. I didn't, you know, I stitched it on with kind of a, a heavy needle to make sure it was really secure. I just kind of tied it off on the back and then cut it. And I think this bag is super cute. I would love to get this as a gift. I think it would make a really great gift for yourself. You can always give yourself a gift, right? <laughs> or somebody in your life, I think that they would really like this. You could go get the ones at the Dollar Tree, try those out. I really think the size of those and the look of those would be fantastic for one of these rug purses. I love this as a gift idea, but what do you think? Okay, so for this next gift idea, we are gonna need to head down to the kitchen. Okay, so we're in the kitchen and you may be asking yourself, wait, am I watching Design to the Nines or Dine to the Nines? <laughs> no, I am not switching to a cooking channel, but I just thought it would be really pretty to make an infused olive oil to give as a gift in this container that I found at Ikea. Now, there are so many ways to do this. I'm gonna link a couple of episodes that I watch, but there are tons of different recipes, so go check those out. And I'm just gonna kind of walk you through the process that I did. So the one that I went with is kind of like a sage, rosemary, and thyme. And so in mine, it has some peppercorns. In mine, I took like 32 ounces of high heat olive oil that I got buy one, get one free at Publix. And then we, I dumped that into a pot. Then I added some sage, rosemary, thyme, all fresh, and then a couple of cloves of garlic. And then also I put in there some peppercorns. Now, the one that I watched is Said that you kind of bring it up to 300 degrees. Once it's at 300 degrees, turn off the heat, let it sit for 10 minutes. And that's what I did. I fished out all of the kind of larger items and then for the smaller ones, because I didn't have like one of those kind of small strainers, but I had this strainer. Then I kind of transferred it into a bowl and let it cool a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna go back upstairs and I thought it would be really pretty to put a little decorative necklace around our infused oil. And so I just took some of these wooden beads. You could take the same wood beads from the purse if you'd like to, but I had these ones that were a little bit smaller that were from Walmart and I kind of just rotated the colors, kind of like a, a medium brown and a more natural color, kind of rotated them back and forth. I made it about seven inches and honestly, I think six inches would have been a little bit better so just keep that in mind on yours. You take a little measuring tape and kind of measure and see what will work for your bottle. And I just kind of rotated them back and forth and then I kind of knotted it off at the end. And then I added just one more bead and knotted that off as well. And then I took some twine and kind of wrapped it around my hand. And as you can see here, this uh, twine was very um, intertangled and so <laughs> it was kind of a mess, but I ultimately did get a little tassel made out of this. So you just kind of wrap that around a bunch of times and take the excess of that twine from your beaded necklace and kind of tie it through that tassel and make a knot. And then you kind of take another piece of twine, wrap that round a whole bunch of times to, and then knot that off. And then you can kind of cut off the bottom and you have a tassel. And then I thought one little fun added step is to take this little chalkboard tag that I got from the Dollar Tree and kind of tie it to our tassel and just write on in a white paint pen infused oil. Now then we're gonna slip that over the top of our infused oil and it just really makes a cute little gift, don't you think? Now, <laughs> here is what it looks like if you put the oil in hot. I just, I wanted to share my fail with you because I like to keep it real. I got a little antsy. This is what you get as a cloudy mess, but 
<laughs> we'll go back to the one that actually did work out. This is the first time I've ever made infused oil. It was really a fun experience. I think I will improve with a little practice. Give it with a loaf of bread, give it just as it is, but I think that this is a great gift idea that anybody would love. Okay, so if you've watched any of my gift episodes before, I love gift episodes. They are like some of my favorite ones to put together. But if you've watched them, you know I'm always doing some kind of cutting board. I love cutting boards. I think they're beautiful. I think they're functional. I think they make a great gift. So when I found this ginormous one at Ikea, it had a really cool shape. I didn't actually want to do much to this one. I've made Christmas tree shaped ones. I'll link that episode below if you're interested in that. I've done ones with recipe cards but this time I decided to just kind of keep it simple and I wanted to kind of do something just to the upper portion and kind of do a color wash in black in this so all I did was kind of tape it off I went ahead and I thought it would be a really good idea to do matte Mod Podge kind of to seal the edges. I would go ahead and skip this step because it didn't really help. It ended up kind of not accepting the black color wash evenly. But for the black co color wash, I just mixed some chalk paint with some water until it was kind of runny and kind of just did it on the upper portion and let it dry on all the way around. I did have to put like an extra coat or two kind of where I put that matte Mod Podge and honestly the idea of doing that was to prevent bleeding it still bled <laughs> that was such a bummer because though it didn't it didn't even work in the end but it was probably because the paint was so runny and I was working kind of on a curved surface so there was a couple of areas that did bleed um, I was able to very carefully sand it off and I ended up sanding off the whole upper portion where I painted the black and kind of giving it a distressed look anyway. So I was able to mask that. You couldn't really tell. Um, honestly, it looks great in the end. And that's it. It was like so easy to just do that. Honestly, I kind of like the simplicity of this one this time around. After I completed my cutting board, I came across this designer one for $160. Ours was way less than that. And honestly, there's not a huge difference. So you could kind of take several of these gift ideas and kind of couple them together because I think this cutting board coupled with the infused oil and maybe some bakery bread or homemade bread with this cutting board would make a beautiful like set together. So this is one of my more simplistic hacks. It turned out really cute. I love it, but what do you think? All right, so if you also watch my channel long enough, <laughs> you'll know that I like serving trays, I love Lazy Susans and all of that. And this kind of is gonna be kind of like a easy hack of this Ikea one. And it's gonna kind of look similar to some of the other stuff. I didn't actually mean to make it so similar, but it did end up kind of similar to some things that I've done in the past. So I found this Wood Lazy Susan. I'd never really noticed it before. It was beautiful. It had a really nice richness to the wood. And so we are going to wood burn a monogram. Now I'm gonna include a free printable of all of the letters of the alphabet. So I will link that in the description box below you can use it as a template to make a stencil or you could use it as a template to do an image transfer technique which I will show you later on in the episode so you can kind of get the concept of that for me I like to do wood burning with a stencil on my Cricut machine so I just cut this out on my Cricut but again you can do the method that I'm going to show with show you in just a second one thing you need to know about using a vinyl stencil I always on wood use a permanent one because it just does not want to stick very well so you use permanent vinyl if you're making a stencil and you're putting it on wood it will save you a whole lot of frustration it's still gonna be kind of hard to peel off your transfer tape it's gonna want to stick but once you do get it down I did something a little bit different this time I used a, a different marker now I usually use scorch marker I love scorch marker but I kind of wanted to try something different out to see if there's something better and I did 
feel like I got really good results this time around. Now, that may be this new marker, which did feel a little bit thicker. You know, I kind of had to rub it down with my finger. I, less is more, you don't want to go crazy and go overboard or you will get bleeding. So once you got that down, you peel back the stencil and here's another thing that I did differently this time. I got a new heat gun and I'm telling you, I really think this was all the difference because it actually has this tip that hyper focuses the heat into one tiny location instead of spreading it everywhere. It kind of has like this pointy tip that concentrates it and just very carefully went around my stencil, hyper focused heat and it burned it fast and I had less scorch marks other places. They're so handy to have around. They help paint to dry super fast. So you might want to consider getting one of those. I spent, I don't know if it was like 20, $25 worth every penny. I'll link that in the description box below. Once you got the image burned on there, I have this concoction. I think it's somewhere on my Instagram account. It's a natural wood conditioner. It's got like coconut oil, beeswax, and lemon juice in it or something like that. It smells really good. And that's why I condition all of my wood pieces in. And I've had good success with that. So I love the simplicity of this. Who wouldn't want a monogrammed Lazy Susan that's as beautiful as this as a gift and use it as a charcuterie board? That's so many possibilities. Great gift idea, I think, but you'll have to let me know what you think. So we found these little tea towels with the French stripe on either side for 79 cents a piece. <laughs> and there is so many possibilities you could do with these little things. I made a printable, one says Happy Holidays, one says Happy Hanukkah, and the one we're gonna use says Merry Christmas because that's what we celebrate at my house. Whatever floats your boat. I mean, you could come up with every, anything you want. There is a lot of possibilities with this one. So I took my Merry Christmas printable, which will be linked in the description box below and this is the the tracing method so what you do is you print it out then you kind of tape everything down including the tea towel to like a hard surface and then you tape down where you want it to be so it kind of doesn't move and leave it open on one side then you take a piece of graphite paper which I will also link in the description box below slide it underneath and then you take a stylus and you trace the image onto your item. So if it's wood or um, this fabric piece, I've done it on pillows, it works great. So once we have it transferred on, then we are going to take a red paint pen this time around. I've used Sharpies, you can use that as well, but this time around I used a paint pen. I actually really like the results, so I might get some more paint pens and try this out on other things. But I just went over the top of our image in the red paint pen and then that's it. Merry Christmas, a little tea towel. You could throw this in with some wood spoons, maybe like a little baking mix. I've got a big 50 gift idea video coming up with more options than you can handle very soon, so you'll have to watch for that. Next week, I've got my bedroom makeover. I don't know if you've noticed it here in the background. Go check out Ritual Vitamins. You won't be sorry. Don't forget to grab the discount code. Everything you're looking for is in the description box. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, here's another one that I think you'll like as well. And if you haven't done so already, consider hitting that subscribe button right here. It's super easy to do. And I would love it if you joined the DIY Niner family and to all of my DIY Niners, I just want to remind you that you are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.